Hey guys, Morland here. Today I'm going to show you a super strong crusader belt on the PTR, the Hammer Din. Now, if you played Diablo 2, you probably are familiar with the Hammer Din concept. Pretty much you throw hammers around you, and yeah, it's super strong. Look at that attack speed. But yeah, let me explain the build first before I show you uh, this build in action in Rift. Now, the build is pretty simple. You use the light set, and the good thing with the light set is it increases the blast damage, or uh, the damage of blast hammer, by 750% if you have the full set. And it also reduces the cooldown by provoke by one second, but more on that later. So use the uh, light set, then um, use uh, unities to survive greater rifts. Um, if you don't go greater rifts and have enough survivability or playing groups, you can use something else. Then a convention of elements uh, ring. This um, again has a four second window out of 16 seconds where you actually deal 200% um, additional damage, which is huge. You can see here is the buff. Um, for example, now the whole damage is increased. And then you can see um, the lightning damage is increased and so on. But ultimately, like this gives you like huge burst potential every um, 16 seconds. Then health amulet, um, one that later. And yeah, also key part of this build is the bracers. When blessed enemies or blessed hammer hits three of your enemies, 86% of his wrath cost is refunded, and it costs a lot of wrath, so this is really important. And then you use Johanna's um, weapon and Johanna's shield. Trainer shield makes it so the blessed hammer damage is increased again by 220% for the first three enemies it hits. Really useful against Rift Guardians and small um, elites to finish them off and so on. And the Trainer's argument increases the attack speed for blessed hammer by 100%. That's why it's so fucking fast. Um, there's an option you have here. You can use, for example, Trainer's argument, the weapon here, in your Kanai's cube and equip the furnace and then also change your passive. That's the second option you have. Belt for rifts, the best one is a string of ears because it has 30% reduced damage from melee attacks. If you want to play a bit more offensive, you can also get a witching hour, which is attack speed instead of the defensive reduction. Can I scoop? Um, we have the hexing plans. Um, more on that later. We're gonna be moving constantly with this build, even though we do a lot of damage with the hexing plans. And then we have Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, which reduces the remaining cooldown of one of our skills by one second. And there's a B here right with me. But yeah, I think it's come now. Damn. Um, but yeah, Obsidian Ring of Zodiac reduces cooldown, which is very important for Provoke and also Akara's Champion later on. And then we have a Furnace. And the Furnace increases damage against Leeds by 50%. That's pretty much the build here. Um, skills now. We got Blessed Hammer. Limitless, that's the bread and butter of this build. The key ability. Actually, the only attack build that we use. Then we have Siege Charge for movement speed. Here have an option. Some people also like to use Fallen Sword because it also synergizes with the light set. But I think Steel Shot is better for the movement that you have and also survivability. Provoke Lens is going to be the main Wrath Generator. Here you also have an option with the runes, pretty much you can use anything here. All of them have really good advantages. I use Cleanse for some additional survivability. Um, Loss of Value is a DPS skill, pretty much just um, increases the attack speed even further. Then we have Iron Skin, Defensive Skill. Survive um, certain packs. You can have this up almost permanently. And Akira's Champion is like a huge burst skill that you also want to use like as often as possible in proper situations. Passives are Fervor or the um, other one, depending on which weapon you use. You can also use Heavenly Strength if you use the Unity and your Cube, the Trinus weapon. Um, then we have Finery for additional strength. Blunt for again increased damage of Blessed Hammer. And Indestructible, which um, means that we're just getting some more survivability. Then I also have um, Health Amulet with Long Arm of the Law, which increases the, five, uh, the duration of my law here for, by 5 seconds, which makes it almost permanently up. Alright, enough for the build. Um, Templar, same gear as usual. Um, gems we can probably talk about. Um, there's 3 gems. Again, I'm playing a non-season here right now, so I don't have access to the Stricken Gem, which would be my first option. Um, but without the Stricken Gem, I use Bane of the Trapped. It's pretty much the second best gem. Then I use Gogok, which should always, always be part of this build because of the increased attack speed and cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction is very, very important. For example, on the shoulders, you really want to go for a cooldown reduction here. And um, instead of, for example, area damage. And the third one that I use right now is Tegok. This is the one I will replace with um, the Bane of Stricken to get more single target damage. And that's pretty much it. So let's go on Rift now and check this out. Uh, 50 is, I think, good enough for this. And you're gonna see this is gonna be a very, very fun build. And that's how you're gonna move. Like, you always wanna step down to keep up um, your pants that you have 
in the cube. Which had hexing bands and hexing bands make it so when you move, you do 24% or 25% more damage and you also um, gain additional. Damn, the speed really doesn't want me to make this video here. But they're usually cool. Um, Alright, you see here I was in the buff by the 61 right now, this is the Tego Gem, so I always have to keep attacking so you don't drop it. And yeah, you see there's a lot of hammers flying around. Always use the rogue, which is life on hit, so ability and um, rough generation. And you keep going. You throw in a defensive skill, pull everything, kill everything. It's pretty much how the build works. Now there's a lead pack, so I'm gonna use Hakara's champion for additional damage. You can see this leak pack integrated with 50, and that's not a really good gear to have. Like, I have maybe one or two ancient items going down pretty easily. This build also synergizes really, really well with shrines. There's actually a second leap pack now. Maybe I have to leave the bee outside again. My window is open, so she came in, and maybe she wants to, like, uh, check out the Crusader build or something. But yeah, you can see this is going very, very smoothly. I haven't lost my Tego gems yet. And the only annoying thing is like you can't just stand and cast your hammers, you always need to move. But that's good anyway, because um, you kill so fast with all the hammers around you, that you want to be moving constantly anyway. And you don't even care about the leadbacks of this build, you just kill them. The hammers do around 500 million damage sometimes. And it's like about the masters. And here we have the first shrine, let's see what we get here. Oh shit, it's a power shrine. That is great. Gotta be careful with the siege dodge so you don't lose the Tego gems. It's not gonna be a problem if you use the new gem, the Stricken. But right now I have Tego so I don't wanna use the siege dodge too often. Keep the big hammer wave up. And doesn't leap. Just with the last bit of the power shrine will be good enough to kill this elite. And it's already down. See the rift, we have a big lead here now. Pulled. So ability, um, when this build is not that great, but if you use all the cooldowns, with some iron skin, at the right time you should not die. As long as the key is appropriate for whatever rift you are doing. I mean, they go a bit low sometimes, like now, <laughs> but that's okay. Hammer, hammer, hammer. This is like a faster version of Diablo 2 uh, Hammer Dean, which was super, super strong, but a bit slower paced than this one. Okay, let's move on here. I'm gonna get done with this wave. There's another shrine, a speed shrine. Very, very good. Look, I'm gonna pull something really, really huge now. You see all the hammers flying. Keep up your one and three at all times. Look how much progress this gave. This gave a lot of progress. It's a very um, fast build and very spammy as well. Like you need to click a lot. Especially if you use it for a smooth and you wanna maximize um, if you wanna maximize your hammer up time. I mean the attack speed is so fast that pretty much like you can start the step with you are stand still every single second. You get most value out of it. So see my Templar throwing in some CC. And Helm is just killing everything. You pull as much as possible, because you got the highest survivability. Just gotta be careful with certain epic cells on lead packs. But yeah, if you wouldn't be playing a Barb next season, Crusader is probably what I would start with. That being said, like I might even like start a Crusader, maybe on Hardcore, like after I'm done with the Barb. I'm gonna play Crusader and always have fun with that. There's a lot of monsters again. Should give me around 10% aggression. Keep the defensive buffs. When you're getting low, you can always use health potion. It's actually a champion back and the lead pack, so it's a bit more damage than usual. But still, not a little easily. Almost down. You're gonna see like the Rift Guardian, which is the problem for many builds 
with this build, no problem. It's bad. If you get like a real emergency situation, then you can just use the force to seed charge and go away. I mean, if you don't like this variation build, as I said, like you can try folding sword instead of the siege charge, which I'm not really using much this rift, and yeah, get additional damage and additional um, skill to use. There should be enough progression soon. This is my final boss I'm up here but before the Rift Guardian. Didn't even get a conduit train this wave, but still. Should spawn very very quickly now this guardian. I'm gonna try to maximize my wrath before and there he is. Keep a Pego one last time. And it's the bone warlock. Now I see how fast I kill this. Once the hammer's up, it's going down fast. Now I got all my buffs up. And you see. Doesn't take long at all, and that is about the pain of striking. The pain of striking is even gonna be, I would say, around 34% faster, even. It's gonna be a 5 6 minute whip. You can probably do like 57 58 with my current gear. Full ancient, like the best crusaders, have already done 65 on the PTR. It's not as high as Barb, but it's solid. In group, I mean Crusaders aren't going to be the best, but also not going to be the worst. I mean, they had some, some utility to the group with the law and also buff the group's damage. And there we go. That's the Rift. And that is the Crusader build. So we're gonna upgrade the gems quickly. Not really much you can upgrade though. 8% chance, very low. I need to go back. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you wanna play um, Crusader, I think it's definitely fun to play it this way. Um, they buffed the hammer damage a lot in this patch, and hammer is actually a really viable option now. It's fun playstyle as you were able to see, and yeah, hope you guys have fun with the video and build. Thanks for watching, I'll be back.